Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, uh, day two and it's in the morning and we are here with uh, Dennis and Uranium now and David Cates, the president and CEO, wants to give us an update on the company. Good morning, Yes, David. good morning. Fantastic. So, hope you are fine. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah. Um, we have spoken, I think, last time in March PDAC last year, so a lot of good things happened. Maybe you elaborate a little bit uh, as a summary um, what 2018 brought to you. Yeah, so 2018, a uh, very busy year. We spent much of the year preparing for a pre feasibility study mm -hmm. uh, for our Wheeler River project. Uh, we have 90% on this project. It's our flagship. And in September, uh, we put out a pre-feasibility study uh, in accordance with our Canadian standards, 43101. Uh, and the result was very dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, we switched mining methods at our exceptionally high grade Phoenix deposit. Mm -hmm. So this is a deposit that averages over 19% grade. Mm -hmm. And importantly, it's in sandstone. And now sandstone means that it's permeable ground, mm -hmm. means that water and fluids are mm -hmm. flowing through the ground. And normally that's a terrible thing for mm -hmm. underground mining uh, because you'd have to control that water yeah, and yeah. deal with the, the, the sort of unstable and ground. And you have support the whole thing, right? Exactly. Now, yeah, yeah. in our case, we've turned that totally upside down and we've actually selected in situ recovery uh, mining. ISR mining. ISR uh -huh. mining. Mm -hmm. And so ISR mining uh, critically uses that permeability to move a mining solution through the ore body, in the ground, there's no underground workings, you're using a series of wells, and you actually leach your uranium mm -hmm. while it's in situ, in the wow. ground. And okay. you bring up just a, a solution that is now uranium rich, yeah. and then on the surface, you'll precipitate out the uranium. Mm -hmm. so, so really low cost mining method, low cost capital, low cost mm -hmm. to operate, and no tailings generation. Mm -hmm. And the highlight here was really our operating costs. We estimated that Phoenix would come in at an operating cost in the range of $3.33 US per pound, which will be the lowest Three out of any uranium cents. processing no. or operation yeah. existing or yeah. in the future what, that we know what, of. What would be then like the all-in cost? So if we take initial capital, yeah. we take sustaining capital, and we take all of the operating costs, mm -hmm. we'll come all in, all in. This is a real mm -hmm. all in. $8.90 US per pound. Yeah, but it means you could already produce at $28, right? It means we'd have a $20 margin at yeah. $29 uranium. That's lovely. Exactly. And that's how our story has just dramatically changed. Yeah. So on top of it, we added our Griffin deposit, so it adds scale to the project. Now, it's in basement rock, so it's, it's amenable for conventional underground mining. Mm -hmm. So we use that as a phase two add scale, and all together we've now got an NPV on this project of around $1.3 billion in our base case. And our base case uses the spot price deck for Phoenix because wow. it's that good. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now we're coming from a project that would have been estimated in 2016 to have an NPV of around half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So we totally knocked it out of the park. Uh, it's almost a 200% increase when you normalize some of the factors in the two wow. studies. That is fantastic. So uh, given the facts, maybe you can give us some more numbers. What would be, let's say, initial uh, costs uh, you have, or let's say, investment, yeah? yeah. Um, how long would it take? How fast could you go in production? Because, I mean, with those numbers, sure. uh, you really have to, to uh, yeah, yeah, you, kick it. Uh, no, 100% <laughs> I mean, right. right. And, um, you know, with those, with those yeah. results, our board of directors unanimously approved and the joint venture unanimously approved advancing. Uh, initial capital costs around $323 million Canadian. Yeah, but that's doable. Okay, 100% doable, yeah. especially when you have a 90% operating margin at today's price. I mean, that mm -hmm. means you're looking at bank finance yeah. instead of having to go out and raise massive amounts of equity. Yeah. Uh, timelines, we've already announced uh, in late 2018 that we would be advancing to the permitting process mm -hmm. in 2019. And really, that's your longest lead item. That's about a three-year process. So we'd say construction 2021, 2022, and first production partway through 2024. And I know that mm -hmm. that sounds like it's way out there, no, but no, it's no, ahead no. It's of anyone fast. else in the space. Yeah, there's exactly. a super fast, I would call it. I think there's only maybe a company like, uh, let's call it UEC, for example, which could right. be like- Where uh, assets are, back, are already yeah, permitted and production. basically on standby. That's, that's yeah, right. Exactly, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, what would be then the production rates? How many pounds you think you might can produce? Yeah, so this Phoenix ISR operation would be rated around 6 million pounds a year. Oh, that's substantial. Which would make it probably one of your top five, six largest uranium mines in the world. Mm -hmm. When we add Griffin, we'd get to a maximum production of around 15 million pounds between the two operations. Mm -hmm. So with that six million pounds, even if I calculate prices of today, we would talk about $150 million profit. 
Yeah, it's 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 a, an astonishing thing, even at today's wow. levels. And what is right. the market cap? Well, our market cap's around 400 million Canadian right now. Voila, that's uh, even yeah. not a PE of three. Well, and <laughs> hey, that's that's without counting any of our other assets, exactly. like our McLean yeah. Mill. You get everything you know, for free. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Let's come to 2019. What is the work program? I think you also raised a, a nice chunk of money. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, I think it was Q4, wasn't yes. it? And uh, that went also smoothly through. So you are cashed up, yeah? So what is coming in 2019? And how do you really pursue then? For that sure, all? for sure. Look, so we did raise a little bit of money. We raised around $5 million in the mm -hmm. flow-through market in Canada. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, we're very apprehensive around equity right now mm -hmm. because with that change in the project value, no doubt. it means to give up shares, we're giving up our asset, mm -hmm. uh, like on a, on a discount, right? Mm -hmm. Massive mm -hmm. discount to the value we've created. So we're very much against equity. We're going to fight that. That's part of why equity dilution, we're definitely going to attack that and try to fight that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you've seen us bring our exploration budget down. Mm -hmm. Instead, we've pivoted to a much more aggressive development budget. Mm -hmm. So we will be exploring, and, and that $5 million budget is maybe a third of where we were mm -hmm. in, in past years on mm -hmm. exploration. We will be exploring primarily for satellite ISR deposits yep. at Wheeler River. But the focus is definitely on our field program for project development mm -hmm. at Wheeler. Yeah, to really push that forward. Absolutely. And yeah. the biggest thing we need to de-risk here is permeability. We mm -hmm. know we have permeability in our sandstone. Yeah. What we need is uh, sort of more detailed measures of the permeability in different parts of our deposit so that we can advance to a feasibility study level. So you'll see in 2019 we've budgeted for an aggressive field program where we'll actually drill ISR wells mm -hmm. into the Phoenix deposit and we'll then do testing to prove up the permeability between wells in different areas of our deposit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that will be a massive catalyst for us because what we're proposing has never been done, mm -hmm. right? High-grade ISR in the Athabasca, this will be the yeah, first time. Completely new. Yeah. Uh, and so there's no doubt question marks around yeah permeability in our geology. Yeah. And I think that's why this year's program is so interesting. Yeah. Because our story will be catalysts year after year as we move towards feasibility study and construction, proving up this new idea mm -hmm. uh, and showing the market that it's not crazy. It's actually quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. That is great. No, and um, question is also, um, what might be an uh, initial mind life? I mean, yeah. you are adding yeah, no, with those uh, this, this so, so we're, we're you're looking adding, at, of course. Yeah, we're looking at about 10 years for Phoenix. Fantastic. And then you'd have together with a stagger to mm -hmm. Griffin, you'd have about a 15-year mine life wow. between That's the two decent. operations. But still exploration potential. Oh, 100%. I mean, the property uh, is underexplored in the way that we focus so much on drilling out Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Then we found Griffin and we drilled out Griffin. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really a renewed focus now on discovery mm -hmm. for our exploration team yeah. rather than uh, delineation. Yeah, yeah. Right? super fantastic. Um, last but not least, petition 233, uh, mm -hmm. 232. Two, yeah. um, I think uh, this is due by mid of April, if I'm correct. Yeah, if the if it government take the shutdown is going to maybe well, push may, things maybe, back okay, a little maybe bit. Maybe it will yeah. be May. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it will be 20. 20, we don't know how yeah. long the shutdown goes. No, I'm joking. But uh, the point, is, I, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on that. Would that change immediately the market? Let's let's assume mm -hmm. this goes through. Yes. Let's assume the US is saying, yes, we do that. We help the companies. What could it look like? Will there be a second uranium price uh, for US, sure. for example? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, look, I think anything is possible right now. I mean, I have a, I have a very specific view that this 232 petition is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, broadly for the nuclear energy business mm -hmm. uh, because it, it could increase cost to utilities. But, but I think the, the real story is not uh, what might happen in terms of an actual resolution. Could be tariffs, could be quotas. I'm not sure that I care. Uh, I think this 232 petition was, was timed poorly, to be honest, because mm -hmm. the uranium market was actually recovering. Mm -hmm. uh, we had seen some really fundamental improvements in the supply side with Cameco curtailing MacArthur and the Kazakhs cutting supply. And at the same time, we saw the utilities waking up to the fact that yeah. a MacArthur oh. River could shut, yeah. right? And they're saying, well, we, we're going to need to get into the market. And then boom, 232 petition comes yeah. into the space. And they say, well, what, is, what does this mean? Yeah. And what should I do? And so they've all taken a wait and see approach and very much the market has been paralyzed. Now the price is still up because we see Cameco buying mm -hmm. to cover their requirements, mm -hmm. right? But I think the biggest story that will come out of 232, and it doesn't matter the outcome, is that it gets settled. 
mm -hmm. right? Once the uncertainty is off the mm -hmm. table, then the utilities can look at it and say, yeah. okay, we have a quota, we have tariffs, we have whatever it is, yeah. now we know what to do and we can come back to the market mm -hmm. and then we can actually see the market tested yeah. for the real fundamentals that have you know, shifted yeah. underlying all yeah, of this yeah, yeah. around supply and demand, yeah, not yeah. around quotas mm -hmm. and tariffs. So yeah. I think it's really critical to watch it, but I don't think people should be focused on, well, is this good or bad for a denizen mm -hmm. or good or bad for a U.S. producer? Mm -hmm. The bigger story will be the uncertainty yeah. coming off the and table. Then you, they, they, they can act and react. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, what would you quote for this year's and next year's uranium market? I heard from several producers uh, that they said, yeah, we have approximately a 60, 50, 60 million pound supply gap. Yeah. 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 Uh, this can move on. It can be covered from storages, yeah. but to a certain for how extent, long? yeah, for exactly. How long? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. Um, the inventories are can be a murky thing, um, but I, I think it's not always about the perfect math, right? Mm -hmm. It's about behavior, and and like we talked on 232, it's going to require utilities to come and try to contract large volumes, mm -hmm. because what they need and the contracts that they have coming off. What they need is much larger than whatever that inventory is. Mm -hmm. And so when they start to look for long-term contracts uh, for hundreds of millions of pounds, we'll start to realize that there isn't a lot of material that's available mm -hmm. because there aren't very many mines being built or in the pipeline at all to be built. Mines are being mined out and inventories are going to disappear quickly. Mm -hmm. And so when does that happen is really yeah. more important than when the inventory gets drained. Mm -hmm. It's when do they start looking at yeah. the big picture. Yeah. And okay. that could happen, Quickly. again, as soon as 232 yeah, yeah, is off the table, yeah. they could say, let's get serious yeah. about this, and we need to procure right. our material for the next 10 years. Super. That's perfect. So we have, uh, let's put it that way, the future is getting brighter. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you very much. Excellent. David, Thank so you. we talk latest PDAC, I would say, in eight weeks. For sure. And uh, yeah, keep it going. I would say congratulations on your new numbers, because uh, Thanks very that much. is outstanding. And uh, I would say you are hopefully then the next uh, production story. That's the idea. Yeah. We want to be the, uh, <laughs> the the most exciting developer in the space yeah. and, and give everyone that maximum leverage yeah. to the rising uranium price. Super. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was David Cates, the president and CEO of Denison Uranium. And uh, you heard it. Uh, just, yeah, I would say the story changed dramatically. The, first of all, the company has enough money. Secondly, the numbers uh, for, from their pre-feasibility study are really outstanding. They really jumped up. And I mean, with uh, $3.33 or in production costs, they can already plan on production because the market today is 28.90. That's a, a good $25 margin. And as he alluded to, six million pounds would be the starting production, could be ramped up to 15 million pounds. So we talk about easily 150 million uh, dollars of uh, yeah, pre-tax profits, I would call it. This is, of course, all uh, uh, my thoughts, not his thoughts. This is not a forward-looking statement here. But if you just calculate the reality here, this looks fantastic. 323 million dollars as an investment. Canadian dollars. This is absolutely manageable. No doubt for that. And uh, yeah, the company is great. Check it out. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Vancouver.